What's going on everybody, I'm Dr. Vesseluigi, and we're back with the complete Railcraft tutorial for Railcraft version 9.12.2.0, and this is in Minecraft 1.7.10. Now really the only part that's important is the 9.12, the .2 is just about fixing bugs, and last time we talked about materials and blocks, this time we're talking about machines. So, we've got a handed handy crowbar, and the magnifying glass from the materials and blocks, uh, if you remember, we went down into the basement of that little place over there, and there's this helps you look at multi-block structures, which is a lot of what these machines are about. So, first, we're going to talk about the Coke oven. Now, the Coke oven is the first thing you're going to want to make if you want to do anything in Railcraft. Uh, it's a good starting place if you even if you don't want to do Railcraft because it makes coal coke, which we saw in the last episode. Uh, but we didn't really go into detail. So this is a multi-block structure. You can see that it says three by three by three and hollow. So that means it's three by three by three deep. And yes, it is hollow in the middle. If you just put down one or an incomplete structure, it doesn't do anything. If you take out a magnifying glass, it'll say that. Uh, well, that's odd. Oh, anyway, it says that it does not match the pattern, and for some reason, when it's alone, it, I'm gonna do that. It was different last time, but when it's complete, it'll say that this was placed by Dr. Professor Luigi, which is my username, and it, that the structure is valid. And you also see that with these little notches on the side. So now we can right-click on it, and you can just right-click anywhere. It doesn't really matter because it's treated all as one thing and you'll see that there's something to put here an output slot and a liquid thing so all this does is you take some coal and you throw it in there and it'll output coal coke which burns more effectively than coal it takes long, it burns longer and you'll get some creosote oil but it does take a long time I think it's about three minutes per coal and so uh, people will usually have a bunch of these to produce coal coke very fast so to make this you just simply craft it like so and you get one coke oven brick and then you can also use sandy bricks with sand and you get one coke oven brick and so this is going to require quite a bit it's going to require nine times three which is 27 so you need 26 uh, because of that hollow bit in the middle so that's the coke oven let's go ahead and get the next thing which is the blast furnace now this is a multi-block structure as well you can see this as a multi-block right there this is three by four by three and so three by four by three and it is hollow so we don't put anything in the middle bits and once again we can see that it's complete the structure is valid and it has that little thing another thing to note is if you do this or something it'll make it invalid and if it will keep the progress that it's made if it's not like that too long so you can't build two of them right next to each other because it'll just do that so that's a little quirk that you should keep in mind now what does this do well you put coal coke here you put steel I mean iron here and it'll create steel so let's go ahead and get a coal coke and you'll see that it made the coal coke and the burn time is actually double coal so this is a very effective way to for free double your energy and you get half a bucket of creosote oil so we're gonna see how that plays in when we talk about rails and trains so you put coal coke down there in the bottom you get an iron ingot well we'll get, we'll get a few iron ingots you throw that down there and it'll start making some steel and this also takes a little while so that is the blast furnace so those are just two basic things you're gonna need uh, the coke oven is you're gonna need even if you don't really want to do my railcraft next is the water tank now this is a pretty neat thing as well and you see once again it's three by three by three and hollow so let's go ahead and make that real quick Alright, 
Now this doesn't change when you look at it, but if you take your magnifying glass, you'll see that the structure is valid and it'll show that it was placed by me. Now what does this do? Well this just creates water for free. And you can also put water in it, so you can use it to store water, but really it just creates water for free. So that's a pretty useful little thing if you don't want to have a pump system. Just a little something to refuel your steam engine or whatever. Alright, so next is the boilers. Now these are a little more versatile. Those all have a very set size. However, this is a little more variable. So there are four components. There's the There are two main components, the firebox and the tank. So the solid fueled firebox you could put coal into. The liquid fueled you could put liquid fuel such as gasoline and then the high pressure and the low pressure make different amounts of steam. So just to start out, we're going to make the one we saw in the basement of the tavern over there. So see that when you make it, it'll kind of smoosh together right there to make one single thing and you'll see that it is it, the structure is valid. So we have the solid fueled so it has this little thing and these are extra little fuel slots so you just put the fuel there and then you can put excess fuel here this will store the water and over here it will store the steam and so the way and so if we replace down here with liquid then we'll see that again it's kind of lagging okay then we'll see that our our uh, solid fueled boxes have been replaced with a fuel tank and so you can input fuel here and it'll put it in here and you'll put water and it'll put water and so this can use build craft uh, build craft gasoline or whatever so these are various sizes you can make them one by one two by two or three by three as you can see on these, it'll say the dimensions are one by one, two by two, and three by three. And the boilers, or the fireboxes, are always going to be one thick. And of course, this can be done with the liquid fuel firebox as well. the The boilers can be one by one, two by two by two, two by three by two, three by two by three, three by three by three, and three by four by three. So that means you can make them like that. 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 Right. Shift. You can make them like that. Or you can make them like this. Those are all the sizes that you can do. And you see it shows all the dimensions right there. And of course, you can do these with the high pressure boilers as well. So let's go ahead and compare a low pressure with a high pressure side by side. All right, so now we have a low pressure and a high pressure. If you look in here, this can store 20, 256 thousand units of steam and this can store 128,000 so this could store quite a bit more double actually of the steam and you'll notice that it all they also produce different amounts of steam so this produces 10 millibuckets of steam per tick once it's fired up and this could produce 20 millibuckets of steam per tick now these do have the same amount of water storage capability and the based on how large you make your uh, boiler you can store different um, different amounts of water now this is going to play a role in how quickly your boiler warms up if you have more water your boiler is going to take longer to get up to operating temperature versus if you have a mini boiler so let's go ahead and throw some cold coke in there and we're going to need some water now when you're when you're running a boiler you want to make sure that you don't put coal in first because you can't add if, if a boiler runs out of water and it's still hot 
if you add cold water in there it'll explode and I'll show you that by way of example of this miniature guy so let's we'll put a little bit of water in there and let that all evaporate out now you can fill it by just right clicking on it like so and then once it's full it'll do that so that's a little tip if you're in creative uh, if you're in survival it will eat it'll use the water that's in the bucket so we have both we have filled up both of our boilers now let's start them up and you'll see that the temperature will slowly go up and because these have the same amount of water they will go up at the same rate so that's pretty neat and of course this is using centigrade and so once they get up to 100 degrees centigrade then they'll start producing steam how's our little guy over here doing see it's already at operating temperature so because it's such a small unit compared to these it's only heating up a little bit of water for some reason the steam texture is missing I don't know why that is um, it was there before when I played previous versions um, I, haven't, I haven't used boilers in a while so that could just be a bug and they, they do get hot so uh, and if you remove this it'll stay at temperature for a while so it doesn't just instantly cool off which is pretty realistic and nice and of course when they're fired up they have a pretty neat little texture and uh, if you have a fuel bucket with a liquid fueled firebox uh, you can I gotta get a build craft fuel bucket oh that was a build craft fuel bucket you can just right click on that as well and you see it it'll start up and you gotta add some water before it heats up and so you see now it's full of fuel and water so that, you can also use build craft pipes, mechanism pipes, whatever. Uh, it, this is very. This is meant to be used with build craft. Uh, not you can use it without build craft, but build craft and rail craft go well together. Same with industrial craft. So uh, these are still warming up. So I'll go ahead and cut back once they're all warmed up. So we're still let these do these things while we continue on. But you'll notice that uh, again. The, this is has twice the capacity and it also produces steam twice as quickly so they'll actually fill up proportionately at the same rate so if you're gonna want to make a high pressure boiler if you can but it's also more dangerous if you run out of water so let's go ahead and take a look at our next multi, uh, multi block structure next is the steam oven now this is a good way to actually use steam and for this we're going to be using the mechanism ultimate mechanical pipe now I said I did say this works with buildcraft and it is kind of meant to be used with buildcraft but I like mechanism and we already did it we've already used mechanism before so uh, you just take some steam out of this little boiler here and you'll see that it fills in with this pipe right here and if you are using buildcraft Oh, that's not how that. That's not how you do it. If you're using buildcraft pipes, so let's go ahead and grab a stone fluid pipe. It'll actually just automatically fill up. Here, well, we'll just use some buildcraft fluid pipe. Why is it filling up with water? All right, well, we'll use some mechanism pipe. I'm not as familiar. I don't. I don't use buildcraft as much as I did. So you'll see that it is filled up with steam, which means it's ready to use. It just uses steam to smelt things. So let's go ahead and get some ore and watch it at work. So you'll see that it used a bunch of steam. And so it's filling up. It's heating the ore. Uh, I like that sound a lot of particle effects once it does that but what's interesting about this is if you have nine you see that it used a lot more steam that time and it'll actually smelt them all at once so that's pretty cool and so you can really just spread it out and use a ton of steam. So yeah, that's the steam oven. 
So next is the steam turbine. Now this is another multi-block structure, and as you can see, it's two by three by two by two. So we'll just go ahead and build that, like so. And you'll know that it's built. Once again, you can check it with the uh, magnifying glass. But it'll also have this nifty little thing. And so the way you craft the so the way you craft the steam oven is with steel plates around a furnace, and you get four of those. So you only need to do this twice. And the way you craft the steam turbine is with steel blocks and steel plates, and you get three. So you have to do that four times in order to get to the turbine. And so if you open this up, it'll simply say a rotor slot and its output percentage. So you're going to need a turbine rotor, which is made with the turbine disc, which is made with the turbine blade. So to make a turbine rotor, you're going to need three turbine discs. And to make a turbine disc, you're going to need a steel block with eight turbine blades. And that will give you one turbine disc. So that's quite a bit of steel that you need. And of course, a turbine blade is three steel and gets like so. Oh, I should have kept that rotor. So you're going to slap a rotor in there and then you're going to need some steam so our boilers warmed up yet yep and you see this is making about 100,000 and this is only at about oh wait it's about the same hmm that's odd it's supposed to be well hey this holds more all right so the the high pressure boilers at 135 and it's the low pressure boiler is a little bit behind it, so I don't really know why that is, but hey, whatever. And so then all you gotta do is you gotta run some piping, and it'll start outputting. Now, if you're using Buildcraft pipe, you're really gonna have to use a lot of piping in order to get the volume. But this does, uh, this will pump at 6,400 millibuckets per tick, or 64, and it can hold 64,000 millibuckets per tick as it transfers through. As you see, it surged, but now it's kind of slowing down. So let's go ahead and add some more. So we got a bunch of steam in here. We got all the steam. And so yeah, this thing uses a lot of steam. So you're gonna probably, if you're gonna want to run one of these regularly, you're gonna want to use one of those boilers. As you see, this little needle needle will actually visually show you how much it's using. And of course, this generates electricity from steam. So, next machine that we're gonna use is the rock crusher. Now, this is another multi-block that is three by two by two. So the same as the turbine housing. So let's just go ahead and build this. Build it over here. Now we have our rock crusher, and once again, you can check it with the magnifying glass, or like so. And this will crush rocks. This will crush stone into cobblestone, it will crush cobblestone into gravel. There's various things like that. Unfortunately, you can't check the recipe with any eye, so you're going to have to go to the wiki, which I'll leave a link to the rock crusher recipes, as well as the other recipes that we're going to need in the description down below. Now this uses RF. So how do you produce RF? Well, you're going to need these engines. So, these engines are the next one we're going to be talking about. So, the hobbyist steam engine will produce 20 RF per tick and uses 10 millibuckets of steam per tick. This uses 40 RF, uses 20 millibuckets, and this produces 80 RF using 80 millibuckets. So, pretty simple. Use it. It uses half as much. It creates two RF per millibucket, and they just use it at different rates. This one has a little mini overlay in it, so you can just throw in some cold coke, throw in some water, and it'll work like the boiler. The commercial steam engine does not, and nor does the industrial steam engine. If you want to use stuff with the industrial steam engine or the commercial steam engine, you're going to need an external boiler. And so these produce RF, and so we'll go ahead and disconnect our turbine for now so we can conserve some steam and we'll just bring it right around here and you'll notice that these was this out of steam hmm. 
Oh, that must have to power them. There you go. So you do have to power these in order for them to work. And you'll see that the fill up with steam and they'll start creating RF and they will transfer their RF to this thing. Now just like build craft engines, they do warm up, so you can see that you can see that they're blue, and they do have to put off a neat, neat little uh, particle effect. So I don't know why I did that. That was an accident. And then using the RF, it will crush some rocks. So throw some gravel in there, and it'll turn. I mean, throw some cobble, and it'll turn into gravel. Once it uses all of its all its RF, it'll take a little bit. It uses quite a bit of energy. We got the, we just crushed some gra cobblestone. So that's a pretty neat little tool if you want a, a lot of gravel really quick. All right. So next up are the tanks. Now these are also variable structure. They there are possible heights of four, five, six, seven, and eight, and possible diameters of three, five, seven, and nine. So we'll just go ahead and make a three by four, and uh, the rest you can just see there. So you must build the outline with tank walls. So as you can see here, we have our little outline. And then the interiors you can make with any of these. Now it must be uh, in the bottom two layers in order to output liquid. So if you have a tank, it must be either on the bottom like this or right there if you want it to output liquid. So let's we'll put it right there. And if you want it to input liquid, you can put it anywhere else. So uh, those are our two valves. And then you can put the glass or gauge wherever one side must have a complete gauge like so and we'll just sort of fill everything in with the gauge and so you see it'll be complete once the gauge is completed and of course you can check with the magnifying glass and this it simply has water storage so we'll go ahead and take a pipe and we're gonna get some we're gonna get real creative here and pull some water out of here Actually, in order to pull water out of a tank, it must be from the bottom. And you see that it automatically fills in. You don't need engines if you're using Buildcraft. It'll, it's just automatic. So we'll just build this over here, avoiding the boiler and our other steam stuff. And we'll just bring this water supply all the way over to this tank. And you'll see that it has a cool little animation pouring the water in, and it'll show you the height. And as you can see, we're getting quite a bit of water from that tank over there. And that's all the tank does. It'll store any liquid, including steam. So if I were to, I'll just go ahead and build an iron tank over here. I'll build this one a little differently in the ground. And the iron tanks don't hold as much as the steel tanks. The steel tanks hold quite a bit more and of course the bigger you make a tank the more water it can store I don't know exactly what the dimensions are but it will hold more water if the tank is larger oh I used steel tank gate uh, steel tanks there we go and we'll go ahead and bring in some steam There we go, a little bit of lag there. As you can see, it's filling in with steam, which right now is a missing texture. All right, so those are the tanks. Quite a lot of tanks. Uh, two varieties of tanks. Sorry, just a lot of tank parts. All right, so let's see what the next one is. Next one is a flux transformer, and we'll go ahead and get the electric feeder unit in there as well. 
and the electric shunting wire. So, uh, as we said over here, this will create railcraft charge. And you can transfer railcraft charge with this electric shunting wire. It's not like, it'll also produce regular electricity, so you could hook up a, a MFSU or something like that to it, but it specifically uses the shunting wire or the, the, red, the railcraft charge. However, there are other ways to make railcraft charge. You can make a flux transformer, which is a 2x2, two two, and this will take redstone flux and turn it into railcraft charge. And so you see, it'll be like that. And the only mod that I know of that uses red, uh, redstone flux is, uh, what was it called? We have it in this mod pack. Factory, factorization, something like that. The mine factory, and so this uses RF. And if you want to take electricity and turn it into uh, railcraft charge, you can use an electric feeder unit. And of course, you could also use an electric feeder unit on this if you really wanted to, but it's just more efficient to do that. And we'll, we'll learn more about this when we're talking about the tracks and the electricity and stuff. So this is what you're going to need if you're going to convert electricity to railcraft charge, which I'll, you're going to need to because a lot of mods do that. So now we're going to get into a couple, couple chests, which are pretty neat. The void chest, this just deletes whatever you put into it, which is pretty convenient because I have a lot of junk in here. See, it'll just, it'll just slowly delete everything. This one, no. Come on, just delete. There we go. All right. All gone. Okay. Now this chest is actually really cool. So let's. We have all our gold over here. And if we just throw it in this metals chest, it'll slowly turn them into blocks. So that's pretty cool. It'll just automatically turn anything into blocks. I like that. That's that's a really useful thing. You don't have to worry about auto crafting and all that. And it'll just do it all. That's I like that. That's probably that's a really neat addition. So over here we got the rolling machine. Now this is a very useful item because I'll go ahead and delete this. Of course this uses railcraft RF and those need to be supplied by engines. So we'll go ahead and delete those ones. And specifically steam engines. For some reason uh, it doesn't work with build craft engines. And you use this to make a myriad of things that Railcraft has. Uh, so we'll just start out with, we'll sh I'll show you one. I'll leave a link in the description for all of the recipes because once again, NEI does not support this. It used to. So yeah, here we have this three iron like this will create rebar. And then you click to craft and you'll use some RF and craft for rebar. So that's how you use the rolling machine. A really neat way to do it and you use that a lot when you're making rails so that's also another essential if you're going to do uh, railcraft an engraving bench another mach another machine that uses RF which is created by these engines the engraving bench now the engraving bench is really interesting because you just throw in a steel ingot and you can choose a logo that you want you can unlock more emblems by going to you, uh, Covert Jaguar, which is the creator of Railcraft, to his Twitter, YouTube, the Railcraft blog, and they'll just kind of spit out the codes. I have not worked with that, but you just put in the code there, click unlock, and it'll show you a little picture. <laughs> so, for this, we're going to engrave that. So, let's go ahead and engrave it as it uses RF. And all of a sudden, your your steel ingot has turned into an emblem, and so it just looks like this. But when you hold it, it'll show the neat little emblem. If you put it in an item frame, it'll show the emblem. But it also it also has something to do with the locomotives, which we'll talk about in the next episode with the trains. So make sure you stay tuned for that. The feed station is another very useful tool that Railcraft offers that it doesn't really make sense with rails but it is pretty cool uh, didn't think this through I can't spawn mobs in the safe zone so 
uh, I'll go ahead and get out to the edge where we can to show you how this works. All right. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't, I didn't realize that. All right, so we're gonna need some wheat. People have been getting those doors. There's a little bug with flans and continuum warps. So, and you can't break them, they're indestructible. So let's we'll go ahead and put down our feed station. You fill it with feed. You put down a few cows and it'll automatically feed them over time and make them breed. So you see it fed that cow and it took one of the weed away. Go ahead and wait for another one to feel the love. Oh yeah, it'll just slowly feed them. Uh, yeah, it takes a while. You want to get over there? There you go. It made a calf. And so this will just slowly increase. This is a good item to have on an animal farm. It'll just slowly make more animals. So let's go ahead and head back to market over here, where the rest of our tutorial is taking place. I have made a cute little fence and everything. All right. So that's the feed station, another very useful, not specifically rail related item. Trade station. This is another neat one. Uh, this will take nearby villagers and allow you to trade with them. Now, I'm not sure if this is because I'm an OP or if this is what it does, but you can actually generate random trades of the villagers and perform them like this. And of course, it'll cycle through all the different villagers, even the ones that mods offer. And you can just randomly generate villager trades. So that's pretty cool. It's a trade station. The wiki page is not very detailed on that. Now, the world anchors. This is a very popular thing for Railcraft, very popular in Tekkit. And we're going to need the Trackman's goggles for these. And we're going to be using this quite a bit when we talk about routing in part five so to use the trapman cargoes you're going to shift and if you right click it'll cycle through various auras for this we're going to use anchor and slap those fashionable goggles on and throw down an anchor now there are four types and this one you can only get through a continuum orb or by cheating so this is just an admin anchor and it works exactly like a world anchor in the fact that it will load a three trunk radius constantly and you can see that with these particle effects it shows what's being loaded so you see that someone has a world anchor up here I wasn't lying when I said that they're very popular and you can just follow where these are going to see where the world anchor is now the world anchor runs using ender pearls as fuel and it uses one ender pearl per 12 hours by default that can be changed in the config you can also change what fuel it uses so that's a nice little example of someone actually using it it's very they're very popular uh, there's also one in use way up there so there are three types for if you're on survival and the admin anchor the world anchor will load a three trunk radius so let's pretend each one of these blocks is a chunk the three trunk radius will go out one, two, three, and it will load all those chunks in there. So it'll load a total of 25 chunks like that. So it'll load all that. Now what a world anchor does is it loads this no matter what. Even if no players are there, right when the server restarts, boom, your that world is loaded. So if you have like machines or something and you want to go mining or machines and you want to leave the server for a bit, it'll keep that loading and it'll keep your machines going. Now, if you have a personal anchor, that's a little different. It's slightly cheaper. So this uses diamond and uh, emerald. This is cheaper if you found a village and you have emeralds. Uh, what this will do is if you, the player who placed this, so this would be me, if I come into these chunks, I load up this personal anchor and then I leave it'll keep it loaded but it will not keep it loaded once I log off or if the server restarts and I join back on this must be loaded first and the player who placed it must be online line this is very similar to the passive anchor but the person doesn't have to be online so the passive anchor is crafted with cyan dyes so it's a little cheaper than the personal anchor that player has to be on they have to be load the thing 
the, the passive and personal are very similar. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. I think one of them, the player has to be online, the other one, the player doesn't. So I'd have to say with the passive anchor, you must be online. With the personal anchor, you have to load it, and then you could be offline. It doesn't matter. But if the server restarts, then you have to load it again. So this won't just be always loaded. The world anchor is really going to want you want to go for because that will load the chunks no matter what. But it's also a burden on the server, so a lot of servers will actually ban this item. Of course, mine doesn't. And again, all these use uh, admin. These all these use ender pearls for fuel. One ender pearl per twelve real life hours, and they'll you can use the trackman goggles to see what's loading them. The admin anchor, where it's exactly like a world anchor, and that'll keep twenty five chunks loaded no matter what. But it does not use ender pearls. It's just free. And of course, that's uncraftable. So let's go ahead and fill in this little hole here. So yeah, those are the world anchors. Those are very useful things. Again, not necessarily rail related, but when you talk about the trains, you'll see how it does become rail related. This is a pretty neat aesthetic thing. You just craft it with a cauldron, netherrack, redstone, and it'll bring it right into the industrial age with all that pollution. Just create smoke particles. And this can be toggled with a redstone signal, so you can just you can shut it down. And so yeah, that's rootin' tootin' pollutin'. Also, if you want to create like a smoke screen to hide something, but uh, if someone sees these things going, it's not very hidden. So yeah, they're pretty popular for just a little, a nice little touch on the factory, and it'll bring it right into the industrial age. Uh, the last two are steam traps. Those are. Those are just extra things that I was going to use, but I decided not to. So, the steam traps. Again, you're going to need some steam. So let's place this one right on the boiler. And you see it faces whatever direction you're facing when you push it. Now the manual steam trap, whenever you place or whenever you give it a redstone signal, it'll burst steam, and that'll burn you. I mean that will burn you you get a burn I don't I'm not I can't say if you get a I can't say for sure if you get a the hey come on I can't say for sure if you get catch on fire but I do know that it burns so you see this one's running low on steam it uses 8,000 steam I believe so it won't use any more and so yeah it does need a very good supply of steam Automated steam trap is basically an automatic version of it. You can, it will set. Uh, sorry, if you power it on, it'll burst whenever it detects motion in front of it. Come on. Or in theory. All right, I guess there we go. So yeah, as soon as it detects motion, it will burst, and you can turn it off with the lever. So those are all the machines. Let's go ahead and get back to our coke oven and you can see during this entire episode it's burned 24. So this is pretty slow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, next time we're going to be talking about trains. Finally! We're going to be talking about trains and railcraft. So this is machines part railcraft tutorial part 2. I'll see you guys in part three. And as always, we are on my server. There's a link in the description below on how to join the server. You just download a simple mod pack and head on over. See you guys next time.